Hello and welcome to the first part of the After Effects tutorial series Getting Started with Eye Expressions. In this series you learn how to work with Marmor World Eye Expressions in After Effects. Eye Expressions is an extension that allows you to use expressions without writing a single line of program code. Hence, this expert feature becomes very easy to use and allows you to work in After Effects in a simple, efficient and creative way. In this first part we cover all the basics based on the example of Wiggle Expressions. You also learn how to link parameters of eye expressions to sliders in order to animate them over time. Ok, so here we are now in After Effects and the first thing I want to do is to open the eye expressions panel, you find it under the window menu and here you have then to choose eye expressions.jsx bin. Um, it's here not within the area you can see but below it but anyway believe me it's there and if you click it a new panel opens with the eye expressions interface. The first time it pops up like this and then you can dock it wherever you want in your interface. Ok, this interface is actually very easy, it just consists of three buttons and the most important button is here the library where you can access all eye expressions. So currently here this basic wiggle eye expression with its parameters is loaded and if you click on the library you get here an extra window where you can see all different eye expressions. So you can look here at different category, audio eye expressions or wiggle eye expressions which we want to look at today and if you click on any of them, let's say one side wiggle 1D, you directly get here a description of it or here basic wiggle, the description of the basic wiggle and if you want to know more you can also click on online help here and then your browser is opened with a description of this particular eye expression and many of them even contain here a tutorial so that you can then directly watch to see how this eye expression is working. Ok, if we select here an eye expression, let's say we select here the directional wiggle and click OK, then this eye expression is loaded here into the interface and you can apply it to properties. Ok, the one we want to work with is first the basic wiggle, so we go to wiggle and basic wiggle. So these are all different options how you can wiggle properties and the basic one is the most yeah, simple one. I just click here and load it and now we want to apply this wiggle to some property. So let's look at our project. We have here a text layer wiggles which consists of this text and we have some background that basically consists of everything else and we also have here an audio file and this audio file looks like this. Yeah, and let's just play it. Okay, so we want to wiggle this layer now according to this noise. And to do this, we just select here the position and apply this eye expression. And now you can see that here the values have become red, which means an eye expression is active. And if you animate over time here, you can see that it is wiggling. And now we can play here with these parameters. For example, you can say, hmm, this is not wiggling enough for me, I want it to wiggle more. So you can change the amplitude, so how much it wiggles. You can do this by changing here this number, let's say to 300, and then you have to reapply this change. Yeah, so select the position and hit apply. And now you can see that it wiggles much more. Yeah, so by up to 300 pixels in any direction. Now if you play with these parameters it's quite cumbersome to always change them, hit apply, change them, hit apply. What you then can do is to select the position once, hit apply and then enable this button here which automatically applies, and apl uh, uh, applies now any changes you do here live to the position that you last applied it to. So in other words now we can just go here and change the amplitude. Yeah, you can change it either by editing these numbers or using this slider here. And you can see now it wiggles just a bit. And then we can just increase this and now it wiggles much more. The same holds also here for the frequency which says basically how
how fast it wiggles. Yeah, this means three wiggles per second, wiggles three times per second. Now we can say wiggle 20 times per second and then you can see it is much faster. Uh -huh. Like this. Okay, the problem we have now is that this wiggles now all the time. Yeah, so it's not wiggling here according to this noise. And what you can do there is we use some other <coughs> powerful feature of iExpressions and this is this linking button here. So the default thing is you always, so, so the simplest way of using iExpressions is just changing here these numbers, selecting some properties here and applying it. And then we can do this here, which links a certain variable to some property of your project, which also means that you can animate it over time. So let's put this here to some reasonable values. Let's say an amplitude of around 100 and a frequency of yeah maybe something like 7 or so. And now let's say, okay, we do not want to wiggle uh, it like this all the time, but we want the amplitude to start with 0, which would mean no wiggling at all. And then we want to keyframe it to grow higher, to wiggle stronger, like this. Uh, what we can do for this is just select a layer, do not select a property, but just this layer, and then click on this button here, which enables the linking. What then happens is that here uh, a box pops up that says you didn't select a property that you want to link with. Yeah, we haven't selected any property here, but just the layer. So it asks, should I create a new control on this layer to link it to? And we say yes. And what now happens is here a new effect appeared that is called um, amplitude of basic wiggle. And this is just a slider with which you now can control this amplitude. Here you have advanced options of this link. I just collapse this because they are not so important at the moment. So the important thing is here the frequency, you just have this number now and the amplitude, you do not have the number anymore, but the amplitude is now linked to the slider amplitude of basic wiggle. Yeah, to this slider here. And this linking is now automatically applied already because we have enabled here auto apply. And we can see that currently it is not wiggling at all anymore because this slider has a value of zero. And if I increase this here to let's say 190, you can see it starts wiggling. And of course we can now easily keyframe this according to this sound. Yeah? So I hit LL or with this layer he selected, LL which reveals uh, this amplitude here, this audio amplitude or the waveform. And then I click here again and hit E to reveal the effects, namely here the amplitude of the basic wiggle. And now we just keyframe it and say, okay, here before the noise appears, it should have a value of zero. Put there a keyframe. And here it should have a value of, oh, what did I click here? Didn't want that. Uh, anyway. Here this has a value of 100 and then here it should slowly decrease again when the noise stops to a value of 0, like this. So let's look at the RAM preview of this. Ah, this looks already quite nice and of course we can still do any changes here. So say oh, maybe we want to s uh, uh, wiggle it slower. Uh, or maybe faster. Uh, so, general thing, how to use I expressions, go to the library, choose the expression that you want to work with, play with the parameters, and in case you want to animate any property here over time, just link it to some new slider by clicking on this button while having the layer selected on which you want to create this uh, slider. And another thing that you can also of course do with this linking is not to link something to a newly created slider, but you can actually link stuff to arbitrary properties. Uh, also existing properties of your project. Yeah? We can for example say we have here this background layer and this background layer has some opacity and now we want to link um, this uh, amplitude here to this opacity. Um, and 
for this, I unlink it here. Yeah, I, I re remove the previous link and then I select here this new value that I want to link it to and click here. And now the amplitude is linked to the opacity of the background. I can go back again here to the position and uh, apply it to it. Or actually no, I wouldn't even have needed this because the auto apply here was still active. But anyway, you can see now it again wiggles all the time. Yeah because this opacity here is all the time 100, which means it wiggles uh, by a value of 100. And now if we make this here uh, less opaque, the wiggling gets less. Yeah, Now it wiggles by a value of 16, and now it wiggles by a value of 100. So by this you can actually link something to arbitrary other properties. I mean, in this particular Example, it doesn't make much sense to control the wiggling by the opacity of the background, but you can, for example, think of uh, yeah, controlling um, some opacity of one layer by the opacity of some others or stuff like this. In the later parts of the tutorial, you will see interesting things that you can link to each other. And in general, this usually means avoiding keyframes, yeah, because the more automatic connection between properties you have, the less things you have to manually manually dial in with keyframes. So, and less keyframes keep your project more efficient because you can easier um, uh, you can either play with the keyframes without having to update thousands of keyframes, but just uh, a few of them. Okay, but this will be covered more uh, in the next parts of this series. The only thing I want to show you today, uh, finally. In addition, is what to do with this load and bake buttons. The idea of the load button is quite easy. Assume that we continue working with our project and select here whatever else I expressions. Let's say we choose here the beat mixer. And now we have here loaded the beat mixer. And let's say now we want to go back to this wiggle expression we had here. What we can do is simply select the property that this I expression was applied to. So in this case, here's a position and click on load. And then here the I expression is loaded with all its uh, options Yeah, here with this linking of the amplitude and so forth and so on. And now you are free to edit it and apply the modifications. The last thing is this bake button, which turns your expression into keyframes. Yeah? So let's say we want to restore here the original one. I just reveal here in this clicking on E, this uh, effect here amplitude of basic wiggle. And let's say we want to link our expression again to this one. Yeah? So I unlink here the link to the opacity and I redo a link to this slider here. So now it's again connected to the slider and then shift P, I apply it here to the position. So just to undo the changes I did before, yeah, now again we have such a wiggling that wiggles here not at all and here now very much and here again not at all. And now let's say we are done with this and we want this not to be an expression anymore, but we want it to be keyframes. Yeah? And of course we do not want to have keyframes here in this area where nothing is moving and also not in this area where nothing is moving, but only in this area. Then we can put our working area to this range, select the property that we want to turn into keyframes and click here on bake. And what now happens is that the I expression is deactivated and instead you have here your keyframes. Yeah, so this means I expressions are not a one-way street. You can always load them again and manipulate after you have applied them. And also you can at any time bake them to convert them into keyframes if you prefer to continue with keyframes afterwards. Okay, this was it for the first part. I hope that I could convince you that iExpressions is a very useful extension for After Effects. And of course, I hope that you join me again in the second part.